All right, so good to know that you're still there at the program this morning on ITV. Yes, uh, we told you that uh, the issue of Deborah, uh, former Miss Deborah Samuel, we're going to be talking about that this morning. Uh, something that is eliciting reaction and counter reactions uh, already. And uh, we also understand that uh, some international communities are also uh, beginning to make uh, reactions on the issue. Well, uh, Deborah Samuel, uh, was Samuel rather, was uh, a year two student at uh, the Sokoto State, the Malamba Baka College of Education in Sokoto State. And of course, uh, we understand that um, uh, she made something that is alleged to be a kind of a blasphemy now on Prophet Muhammad, and that re re resulted into uh, some reactions. Uh, one thing that stands clear, the question that people are asking is how could this have happened in a citadel of learning in Sokoto State? I mean, for some people, uh, they say that uh, uh, for the fact that these uh, students, uh, people that are that considered to be a very good idea, idea not to kill and idea not to maim, uh, how could they have resorted and reduced to such reactions uh, when that issue happened. And uh, also, we are also going to be learning some things here this morning uh, because we are so privileged to have an uh, Islamic st a scholar with us uh, this morning. Uh, he's uh, Alaji Alao Al Amin. Uh, so, you welcome to uh, this program. Thank you very much. And Good morning, viewers. Yeah, and of course, we've got my uh, co uncle there, Prin a priest. A priest, you're welcome to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, so let's, uh, uh, you know, keep you on going, sir. Now, what do you make of what is going on or what happened in Sokoto State in that school? Thank you uh, very much uh, for this uh, opportunity to actually throw more light on this uh, ugly incident that uh, transpired. College of Education in Sokoto State. Now, to, to start with, knowledge is of vital importance. And uh, when you see some acts being carried out by some people, you wonder why they carried out those acts. Prima fashion, the face of it, the appears say, oh, Muslims are allowed to do this. No. Islamic law allows this. No. And they try to portray the Islamic religion in a bad light. Some of them do not observe five times daily prayers. Some of them are on drugs. Some of them observe the fast in the month of Ramadan that passed. Because Ramadan was made to know that even if someone picks up the Quran with you, tell him I'm fasting. Barely a month after a month of Ramadan, fast, a human being was set on fire. So the question is those who carry that act, act out, we know that the level of their faith. Or understanding or knowledge of, this, of the religion. Why people say, oh, possibly they must have been misled by those who are scholars. Who are those scholars who will mislead you? Then such scholars will be tagged as insane scholars. Because when you fabricate laws which are not in Islam, then it becomes very, very unfortunate. You see, now, when you say laws are not in Islam, what exactly do you mean? Uh, laws against blasphemy, laws against uh, uh, talking at uh, people that you're not supposed to talk at in Islam. Is that what we're trying to say here? Thank you very much. Don't listen to me attentively. Now, Islam has rules and regulations which are contained in the Quran and the tradition of the Prophet, the Sunnah. You are seeing somebody, I've never heard where. He insulted Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam anyway, even if at all that actually happened. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself was insulted when he was alive. He was insulted mm -hmm. when he was alive. And he was in a position as the president, commander in chief then, Madina, to carry out and say, go and kill that person. That never happened. In the Quran, Allah said, where he will be insulted, Allah will say, be patient. So if the person himself when he was alive was insulted and punishment of killing was not carried out when he had capacity, how come now? Are you more Muhammad than Muhammad himself? Or are you more Muhammad than the followers of Muhammad? Hmm. Let me give you some examples. Okay. There was a particular incident. A woman poisoned him. A Jew poisoned him. Gave him poison pills. And what happened? It's not killing. Not killer. Another incident, a billion Arab came. 
when he was relaxing under the tree, took his sword and stood on him. I was about to kill Paul Slam. He said, Who will save you today? Prophet said, Allah. And the sword fell. Mm. My cut off of the sword. And he failed to kill him. There are instances where people will throw even dust at him, refuse at him. And if you cannot see them perform that act again, he goes to the house and says, Where is that woman? I don't want to let at me. They say, Oh, she's on the sick bed. Oh, sorry, but I came to pray for you. Pray for the person. Another incident, a man came to creep him, keep the shed. And Omar, one of his companions, said, This man is embarrassing the prophet of Allah. Give him permission to cut his head. Prophet Sam said, What are you asking for? The man said, What you are owing me? The Prophet said, Omar, I'd want money both of us. If I'm actually owing him, I'd want me to pay my debt. And then tell him to also be calm and be soft in drawing his debt. Anyway, whatever he says I'm owing him, it's not even time to pay. Then Omar, go and settle this debt now. Then this man told Omar that Prophet was not actually owing me. I wanted to find out the last sign. I've already seen some signs that he was the prophet of Allah. I wanted the last one that is patience. Mm -hmm. And the way, he, his patience. Yes, the way he behaved. When it's about time for me to draw the debt, and he asked me to go and settle the debt, I now declare to believe in him as prophet of God, and I take and I, I embrace Islam. So that was the character, that was the attitude of Islam. Even the people of Makkah, who killed his followers, they killed his uncle, Hamza, and dissected the open the heart. When he got to Makkah, after they conquered Makkah, they were all now submissive to him, and he had the opportunity to retaliate. Okay. But what did he do? Okay. Uh, he gave, he gave, I'm, I'm, I'm nasty. Yeah. Okay. So now, it's very unfounded in Islam. Islam is a religion of peace, yes. we all know. Uh, there was a case where somebody, somebody insulted the prophet, yes. and uh, the son of that particular person came to even tell the prophet, let's even kill our father. Yes. He said no. And when that person died, uh, I'm sure it was the prophet that led the prayers. Yes, I'm Thank you. Uh, uh, okay, now, but if we say Islam is a religion of peace, is there any clause in the Holy Quran that said we should kill people who blaspheme the Holy Prophet? There is no. There is no single verse in the Quran. You see, the Sharia law, we have four sources of the Sharia law. Mm. The first primary source is the Quran, the word of Allah, the word of God, the great Muhammad through Akhijah Gabriel. The second primary source, the Hadith and the Sunnah, the saints of the Prophet of Islam, and then the Sunnah is practices. Then the third secondary source now is the Ijma, scholarly consensus. When the scholars come and, and then stand on a particular fact, if there's a vacuum, there's no law in Islam. The scholars all over this the world agree. agree on. Yes, it so that becomes a law. Okay. Then the last one is Kiyas. That is analytical deduction. That one is not binding. That one is God is not infallible. Now, you cannot find it in any verse of the Quran that anybody who commits blasphemy, you should kill him. But, but what we're uh, trying to look at is uh, this is not the first time we're having this kind of situation. I remember sometime, I was just sharing with uh, my uh, colleague here a while ago that uh, some time ago, uh, a certain uh, beauty pageant, uh, you know, she was asked what she would like to do now that she has won, you know, and I think the, the reaction was that she would like to get married to Allah or something like that or do she said something something like that and the reactions was not palatable so it appears uh, this is not the first time we're having this kind of alleged uh, blaspheme and alleged reactions and all that so that's why uh, one is tempted to ask the question what does Islam what does it really teach that I think it will bring this will bring me to this point mm. you see Islam is a universal religion okay and then some parts of the world where people are violent, you will observe that incidences like this may be reoccurring in those parts of the world. I'm very sure the one you are citing to, we see that part of the world. Mm. So, why you now also observe that this incident never took place in some other parts of the world? Mm. Well, in some other parts of the country, too. Not, yeah, and some country, too. Yeah, yeah. Let the country now. You now start wondering, okay, could this not be the attitude or the upbringing, or of the nature people. of okay. these people that is now being mixed with the religion. Oh, for example, now, look at the army couple that was killed. The, the, the girl was raped repeatedly, killed the, the, the fans in her presence before they eventually killed her. The language we heard, Igbo speaking, they are Christians. But do you not say, oh, does Christianity allow that? They are evil people. Mm. 
They are evil people. But now, how many of us have come out to react? How many people have come out to denounce that act? Mm. The Sultan of Sokoto has denounced this act and said that we will ensure that the perpetrators of this crime are carried out. And that is that should be our concern now. Even assuming but not conceding that the border committed a crime, as we are not conceding now, that he committed a crime. We have the justice system in Islam. She must be arraigned before a properly constituted court and tried. She will be given the right to defend herself. Even when she's not, she's not. She'll be given the right to defend herself. Even when she's not a Muslim? Of course. Of course. You are making an allegation against someone. I'm saying, assuming, but not conceding, mm. that she actually committed a crime of blasphemy. Yeah. The Islamic law is very, very clear. It is only the judge, the colleague, that has the competence, the ability, the authority to give a verdict of I deserve this marriage, let alone go and kill her. No mala, no sheikh, no imam, no alpha, no matter your rank in Islam, you give the right, you have the right to say go and execute a human being. Okay. It's very un Islamic. Now, Let me give you an example. Yeah. In case of stealing, you know, Islamic law, the Sharia is application of hand. But in case of stealing, while you are giving evidence before conviction of the accused person, mm. you do not say he stole my assets, he stole my book, he stole my pen. Don't evidence. No. You must not use the word he stole. It's a because this he took. Mm. He took it. He took my phone. He took. It's only when the court has pronounced him that yes, he's guilty. Can I say, okay, he stole it? And then again, the question is, was the Bora a Muslim? No. No, let, let, me, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. If at all a non-Muslim commits blasphemy, mm. and then a Muslim commits blasphemy, the blasphemy, those who have tried to allow blasphemy law, can only be applicable to a Muslim who committed blasphemy. Is there anything like blasphemy law in, in Islam? The blasphemy laws have said there is nothing like blasphemy law in the Quran and in the Sunnah or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay. So when people have, have knowledge, then they bring in some things which are not part of Islam. Okay, now let's look at the location where uh, this whole thing actually happened because that's what people are saying. If we can have this kind of something happening in a tertiary institution where people are supposed to be learning, where people are not supposed to, uh, they, are, they, are, they are entitled to their religion, so to say, but they are not supposed to think along uh, religious inclinations and uh, uh, dictates and all that. So what do you make of the location where this thing happened? The, as I mentioned before, we have some parts of the country where people uh, may be termed as aggressive because of some incidences that can be traced to them. Now, I'm not talking about the parts of the country. I'm talking about the, the school environment. Now, One would expect that uh, it's, it's, a it's, it's a tertiary institution. institution. Nobody should think mm. of that, you know, mindset. Nobody should be of that mindset at all. Now, now, when you talk of the school institution and then the students, who ought to be there to learn, it only shows the quality of education and all that they possess. Mm. And then this thing goes down even to family upbringing, the homes they came from. Charity really begins at home. A child that is well brought up will not say, oh, a classmate. If you look at it, we have a WhatsApp group. This group is meant not for religious discourses. Purely academic purpose. For academic purpose. Mm. And I'm ventilating my anger. Why all this rubbish you are posting on this? That is not blasphemous. Mm. Then you are now turning it to a religious matter mm. and say you are blasphemed against the Protestant. The point I was trying to make earlier on, let me not forget. As I mentioned before, those who insulted the Protestant, Islam, those non Muslims, Allah always tell them to be patient. So when a non Muslim insults the Prophet, Allah, and Islam, you cannot even say you want to. Do anything. If at all, I say, if at all the law of blasphemy exists, it's only applicable to Muslims. Because if you have now professed belief in Muhammad, salam, you don't say anything against him. But somebody who has not believed Muhammad, the main fact they say, I don't believe in Muhammad, is that a blasphemous? He say, Oh, do you believe in him? It's against the Muhammad, but it's not blasphemous. It's because religion is not compulsory. Like Rafi Din, there is no compulsion in religion. But I say, you're now compelling a non Muslim to believe in Muhammad. Or to say good thing about Muhammad is like trying to compel him to believe in Muhammad. Mm. So a non-Muslim who does not believe in Muhammad can always say anything about Muhammad. That is, that is not proper. Mm. And it has been happening like that. So it is only a Muslim now 
You are a Muslim, you now say something like about Muhammad. If at all it exists, you now say, oh, what have you just said? Restart your statement. Otherwise, look at the political for you. Okay. Not that you came to a non Muslim. So, so let, let, me, let me now take you back now. You, you are a scholar, and, and I'm very sure you have um, people that you have been grooming. Is it that our imams have not been doing well in educating their followers? A lot of followers are not ready to learn. Okay. The first verse that was revealed by Almighty Allah to Muhammad has to do with knowledge. The first one was Ikra, read. Ikra, this may not be called the Allah. Read, the day of the Lord created. But many today are bereft of knowledge. They are completely ignorant. And that's the unfortunate thing we have. So those who carry that barbaric act, they are barbarians. They are not scholars. Mm. And they are not representing the Muslims. Mm. They, are not, they are not authorities in Islam. And they were not authorized by authorities in Islam. They are just barbarians and criminals. Mm. Anyway, let's uh, be mindful with the way we say that yeah. now. Uh, the, the point is, uh, because uh, we understand that uh, even the palace of the Sultan of Sokoto was, was almost being attacked <laughs> as a result of... Uh, uh, you know, the, the Sultan trying to wade into uh, the situation. Is it that in Islam that uh, some persons just believe that irrespective of your position, irrespective of who you are, uh, when you are seen, uh, you know, trying to, uh, you know, harbor people that are seen to have blasphemed against uh, Islam or against Allah, that they, they can also be dealt with? Is that the situation? Now, Islam should be defined by Islamic laws. Mm and not what people carry out out there. Mm. Like the reference I made to the people that killed the couple. And so whoever goes after the Islamic law is on his own. But the unfortunate thing is that they use it to try to tarnish the image of Islam. If you look at it properly, Jesus and Muhammad, they had no problem. First Islam, Muhammad said in one tradition that I am most akin to Jesus. That all prophets are from different mothers but belong to one religion. That between my time and that of Jesus' time, no other prophet was born than the closest to Jesus. And if you look at their teachings, Jesus and Muhammad prayed the same way. As Muhammad used his head to touch the floor to pray, that was how Jesus prayed in Matthew 26, 39. If you look at Muhammad and Jesus, they believe in one God. Muhammad said, La ilaha illallah, there is no other God except Allah. Muhammad. In Mark 12, 28, Jesus said that here we said our the first commandment is. Our Lord, our God, is one God. So why do you think the followers of Both Jesus... Of them, and, see, and, and, is saying that you are telling the man, look, oh, should I forgive the person that brother offended me? I forgive him seven times. Jesus said, I did not say seven times. I said you should forgive him 70 times. 70 times you forgive him. Okay. But now, how many say that forgive your servant 70 times a day? Mm. So all the teachings... With what you are saying now, if the pastor were to be here now, he would have probably yeah. said the same thing too, some yes. of the teachings of Christ. So why do you think the followers of Christ and the followers of Islam, they don't, they don't follow these teachings that um, uh, Christ taught and that uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad also taught too? Now, I think uh, possibly, as I said before, my first comment was ignorance, lack of knowledge. And then you now have some other uh, scholars who may be indoctrinating the followers. Mm. And a follower that is indoctrinated, who is not knowledgeable, may go the wrong way. Mm. But on the day of judgment, if you tell Almighty God that I was misled, and you are expecting that Almighty God will say, okay, you are excused, you will not be excused. What Allah said is that, okay, because you are misled, you will still be punished. And only punishment of Allah is hellfire. Okay. And then those who misled you will double their punishment. So what have you gained? So, so how can we now start teaching these people the right teaching? Since it, it's obvious that we've been having backlashes of these kind of occurrences over the years. So as a scholar, how do you think we can start salvaging this issue? Now we have to endeavor to educate our followers in our place of worship. Okay. We should take this incident now as the current topic of sermon in all mosques. Because that is the sunnah of the Prophet of Islam. The Prophet of Islam preaches on issues that are current. You don't now mind the pulpit on Friday within this period now, and you are talking of something that is not relevant to this, so that you can be conscientized and be properly educated, so that this does not occur again. And of course, all hands must be on deck to ensure that the perpetrators are brought to justice. Okay. They are, they are dealing with the law of installation is Islam, very sound. You are killed, you are to be killed. You see, the unfortunate people see other sins as major mm. and see their own sins as minor. 
I repeat again, assuming but not conceding that the brother committed any crime. Mm. They saw, oh, she blasted. Assuming I'm not conceding. No. Now, see the crime they have not committed. You will now stone that to death. You kill that. Which is more. And you now set the car on fire. It is only Almighty God that has the right, the authority, to use fire as punishment. No human being. You have no right to burn even an ant. Mm. So it is totally barbaric and understand what they have done. Okay. Look at Boko Haram. That was like Boko Haram by their coinage. Boko Haram, book is unlawful. Mm. Meaning that Western education is unlawful. It's they, unlawful. See, look, mm. they see that those who have gone to school, they are committing evil. But when they announced that, what were they doing? They were bombing here and there, killing innocent children and women. You see people doing evil now, according to you. And, they, and, and, and they use technology yes. Yes. To, to project things yes. they do. So look at the worst evil you are doing now, mm. bombing here and there. Okay. So now, now the, 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 uh, the Christian Association of Nigeria, Khan, has directed uh, that uh, by uh, May 22 that there should be a peaceful, I emphasize a peaceful protest in response to uh, the death of uh, uh, Deborah. Now, let's begin to look at, because uh, we pray it doesn't degenerate into something that we cannot handle. So as an Islamic scholar, we want you to speak in this direction. You know, because some persons trying to say it that is a Christian versus Islam thing. No, no, you no, know, let's, no, let's no. get your thoughts on that. No, thank you very much uh, for this uh, opportunity. You see, in fact, before I, we, 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 before I come into that properly, we have rules of war in Islam. Even in rules of war? Rules of war. War. Yes, is in, re, in, Islam? Re, in real war situation, mm. where war has taken place, you don't kill children, you don't kill women, you don't But we are not at war now, now so. so. I'm coming now. <laughs> yeah. so even if yeah. Yeah. Rule of war, yeah. I want to tell you the extremists that we have, okay. the fundamentalists that we have, you don't destroy economic uh, crops, you don't destroy churches and mosques and synagogues. It's only the, 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 the enemies that face us. You have right to self defense. So, who are, the enemies who are the enemies now? The, the, your enemies are the war front. If there is a war, that is a, if there is a war mm. in a war situation. But there is no war in the country. We are not at war with Christians. All over the world, we live peacefully with Christians. We live harmoniously with Christians. Mm. Our neighbors are Christians. Our classmates are Christians. Our clients and customers they are Christians. And we live together. And one thing we should also always uh, try to point out is the good relationship and rapport going on among Christians. You see a, 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 a Muslim doctor saving a Christian patient's life. You will see uh, a, a, a Christian doctor saving a Muslim patient's life. All this happened. So we should not give the impression that, oh, Muslims and Christians, they are at war. No, we are not at war. We are not at war at all. Now, people have right to uh, embark on peaceful protests. But as we are doing that, we should have it at the back of our mind that when we talk of Islam, Jesus and Muhammad and Christianity, they are all one and the same. Islam means submission to the will of God. Jesus was talking in Matthew 7 21, not everyone has said to me, God, Lord, to ever God, but he that is of is in heaven. Both Muhammad and Jesus talking of submission to the will of God. Mm. It's the same. Who is a Christian? The follower of Christ. And in the Quran, Quran chapter 2, verse 136, Quran chapter 3, verse 84, how much shall I say that? Should, let me do this portion. Yeah. For you also know, this is very, very important. But we really don't have time on that yes. now. Yeah. This portion, mm. Quran chapter 2, verse 136. For you to know, yes, good, I'm there. Say, all oh Muslims, we believe in Allah, and revelation given to us, and to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and his descendants, and that given to Moses and Jesus. And not giving to all messengers from their Lord, and we make no distinction between any of them, and to him that is God will submit. Okay, okay now, so now I, wait, from this you've read from the Holy Book, yes, has religion done us good? We don't have time, we, we, want, we are so limited with time, my I, I mean, because of time, we, so you we can have see to, yeah. that. So, the, the religion is for God, okay? So, the, the message and like Jesus, yeah. they are all together. All right, Moses, so the message, the followers yeah. that out of ignorance, they are against one another. Yeah. Very unfortunate. And the message, yeah. are, the message you are preaching is that Islam yes. is a religion of peace, mm. of peace. All right, so that's the message. So, yes. please, uh, we've heard it that uh, Islam is a religion of peace, so we must uh, uh, try to be very peaceful in the country. So we just pray that uh, what is going on in Sokoto State uh, does not degenerate into something that uh, we 
uh, cannot uh, handle. And please, for people that will take things to the extreme, we really don't need it in, in this country. Not even now. We don't need it at all. Elijah, thank you so much for our funny time to come. Thank you very much. And uh, so we'll, take, we'll take a short pause now for other segments of the program. Please stay tuned.